What you're about to see is AutoCAD running on the Silicon Graphics Iris Indigo workstation. The Iris Indigo with Silicon Graphics standard productivity tools can help a team working on a project. How much could they help in accelerating a design? Let's listen in while Kevin takes a look at the latest drawings from the Wright Brothers shop. So this looks across the body. You see it looks pretty good. I don't think we're going to have any structural problems here. It goes all the way out to the canards. The supports look nice and strong. I think we're pretty good there. Let me just uh, insert the latest frame design in here. There it is. Let's drop it there. That looks fine. The scale is fine. Y scale is default. Rotation angle, zero. And all we have left to do is put in the latest canard we just finished yesterday. And that should go here. And zero. That looks like it. Um, I got a finished drawing to show you. This is what it looks like. I think we're pretty much all set. Uh, looks a lot better in 3D though, when we go out and get uh, Inventor. There it is. Great. Now that's what I call a wing. Now we need to get these drawings over to the carpenter as soon as possible so we can get a materials estimate for this. But Orville's going to want to check it. He's going to want to see this. File to Orville. Well, not the whole thing, just the improvements. Okie dokie. Better bring up Snapshot. I'll take a picture of this wing. Yeah, I'll save that. I better bring up Showcase to put that in. Insert the wing picture here. That's good. Add some text now. Oh, and uh, make sure you send over that latest weather info we got. Okie dokie. I'll need a new page. Insert the weather picture. You know, maybe I better send him a message. Orville, these are the latest wing designs. I want you to give him a quick look-see. Notice the improved warping capabilities. She's a real beauty. Oh, and I scanned in the latest weather information so you know what we're up against time-wise at Kitty Hawk. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That's just gonna worry. Don't send over the weather information. Just send over the wing improvements. Okie dokie. Now I'll delete that page. Boy, this sound editor is convenient. Is this what you want cut? Oh, and I scanned in the latest weather information so you know what we're up against time-wise at Kitty Hawk. Yeah, that's good. Oh, and leave a note on it just so he'll get to it right away. That's great. Okay, good. Off to Orville. Orville, these are the latest wing designs. I want you to give them a quick look-see. And notice the improved warping capabilities. Mm -hmm. She's a real beauty. <laughs> oh, Wilbur, have I got a surprise for you. <laughs> Way ahead of you, brother. Check this out. I have consulted Indigo with my latest wind tunnel results, and it works out that we get much less turbulence going with the mono wing design. I'm enclosing the data. What's he talking about? That takes horsepower. Didn't he realize that takes horsepower? Now, where are we going to get that kind of horsepower? The machine shop. We got to get a copy of this over to James right away. Okie dokie. 
open airplane folder, select all the files, make some web copies, and drop them into James' machine. And back everything up to Orville's tape drive. Okie dokie. Select all of them and transfer it over to his tape machine. I better send James a message. James, my brother Orville's up to it again. Now he wants more power. Oh, and by the way, while you're at it, less weight. But I think you'll find his idea is an interesting one. Thanks. Well, you might as well ask for the whole dang show. Oh, and by the way, while you're at it, less weight. But I think you'll find his idea is an interesting one. Thanks. Less weight? Dang. This is some sort of joke? They think I'm some kind of magician or something? Now, I can get power just by snapping my finger? Well, I need to look at this in real 3D. Aerial planes. You should be putting engines on your bicycles. Then you'd have something. Power, maybe. What are we gonna do about that dang weight? Less weight? <laughs> you boys ain't getting nothing till morning. Gilbert, double overhead cam raises our horsepower from 16 to 110 with 90 pounds lighter to boot. Well, Alfie, how did he do that? With indigo. Took him all night, but... He discovered aluminum. Aluminum? Brother, we're talking about a whole new ball game of possibilities here. Okay, sounds like a new project. What do you want to call it? How about Sky's the Limit? Sounds good. Say, did you ever get those uh, spruce and fabric estimates from that carpenter? Mm -hmm. Both, monowing and bi-wing. Although he was a mighty bit fidgety about the monowing idea. Huh. Now looky here. Monowing is a heck of a lot cheaper to build. You say he was fidgety? Yeah, I thought the whole thing would snap apart and come tumbling down. Huh. Well, why don't you tell me more about this aluminum? Now, that's interesting. Uh, metal, you see. Say, Wilbur, I was fooling around with indigo last night, and I think I came up with an interesting idea for a bicycle. There are no pedals. Where are the pedals? That's the neat thing. You don't need pedals. Oh, James!
Now, let us show you how to take advantage of all the powerful tools that SGI ships standard on the Iris Indigo. Let's start with some highlights from the free SGI AutoCAD bonus pack. So what is Silicon Graphics done with AutoCAD that other people haven't? Well, you may notice the icons here. I'm just going to open it. And it brings up the drawing rather quickly. This drawing is called Site 3D. It's a fairly well-known 3D wireframe drawing. Let me show you some of the value added that we have. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the SGI Configuration Manager. For example, we can go in here to Screen Colors and say I'd like to be the text background to be a different color. We can pan through a variety of colors until we get the ones we like. We'll stick with the blue. We also have things such as number of prompt lines can be easily changed, display list page size, and the driver options. For example, we can say we'd like to have the command pilot iconify after use. Next thing I want to show you is the real-time bird's eye. This is a capability that really takes advantage of Silicon Graphics GL. As you can see, I'm panning around the drawing in real time, and I also have the capability to zoom, too. This is very handy if you're trying to draw something from the top of that chimney right there, such as a line from there, and you need to go someplace else. You can go back up, pick real-time bird's eye, and go to the top of that house and drop that line. If you had a larger drawing, that could be a bit of work without the real-time bird's eye. Next thing I'm going to show you is the command palette. This command palette we've programmed with some functions we thought might be useful for you. Now you can go in and edit them and put your own in there. For example, we can call the real-time bird's eye, we can call it configuration. Like I said, I'd like to bring up zoom window, and it'll bring up the window, and I can quickly do that. Just another time saver for you. What kind of time saver are you talking about? Well, that's 10 redraws. Let's do another 10 for you. Another 10. We're up to 30 redraws. That's about a day's work of redraws. As you can see, there's an extreme speed available with Silicon Graphics. The next thing I want to show you is Iris View. Here's a drawing called Push Pins that AutoCAD has, but it's pretty hard to see. Now, you can shade this drawing with AutoCAD, but it's not exactly interactive. For example, there's a shade. What we'd rather do is go up under SGI Tools and pull down one of our DXF viewers. First one I'm going to pop up, we've already output the DXF file, it's called Iris View. Now, what's Iris View? Well, Iris View is interactive, meaning I'm allowed to pan around it. I can take that drawing and rotate it. Now, this is in wireframe mode, but we also have some display capabilities. For example, I can go out and say I'd like to have a flat shade and still be able to rotate that drawing in some real-time capability. One of the other features we have that's pretty interesting is a walk capability. So we can actually walk towards a model or back away. Now, for example, if you wanted to show this to someone else, one of the things you could do is write a script. You say, okay, I want to record this walkthrough. And I'll just have it pan off to the left-hand side of the screen. Go back up to script, turn record off, rewind it, and hit play. It's that easy to make a quick animation. Click the left mouse button and it brings back the menu. We also have a lot of capabilities in here, such as outputting. We can output an RGB, PICT, HPGL, and PostScript files in both landscape and portrait. We have layer control, so we can turn layers on and off, and lighting capability. We have eight different lights here, and here's one of the light sources I'm moving around on the globe. In display, we can actually go beyond flat. You can say, let's go out to single buffer. As you can see, it makes the image look a little bit better. Now let's go to a different drawing. Let's open up this DXF file, for example, so you get an idea what this one is. This is the Autodesk logo in 3D. Again, you can type shade in this view, but without moving it, it's pretty hard to understand what's being done there. You know, what are you actually looking at? So what we're going to do is output this one, Tyrus View 2. One of the nice things about DXF is that we're not actually changing the model itself. We're just taking a view of the model and allowing you to work with it. Here's that same model, but a little bit more interactive. 
So what kind of capabilities do we have with Iris View 2? Well, let me bring up the draw mode menu palette first. There's a variety of features in Iris View 2 to allow you to learn about the 3D model. Now, by holding down the left mouse button, I can easily rotate it around. But there's some other interesting aspects of it. First of all, you can look at it in points, in wireframe. A lot of people often ask when they're looking at machines, you know, how fast your machine, I'll do a hidden line. That's how fast Indigo is, except now I can actually move the hidden line in real time. You saw it in shaded earlier. And we also can put it out into what we call single buffer mode, which is a better rendering capability. Now, there's some other interesting things here. Models are made of polygons, so we can actually go out and shrink those polygons. I can also show you where the normals are. Normals are is which direction is the light going to reflect from that polygon. So if I turn off the shrink, you'll see it's sort of like what I call a hedgehog mode. Let me open up some other of the capabilities here. As you can see, there's an awful lot here. Now, here's textures. You can overlay textures. You can turn objects on and off. We have lighting capability. For example, here's the globe right here. You can grab one of the lights and move it around. You can change the color of it, the background color, and the materials. But one of the more interesting things about this, I think, is the clipping capability. People often don't really know what a clipping plane is until they see it in action. A clipping plane allows you to take a model and move it. Now, if you notice over here, what I have it is in degenerative mode. So when I move it without it, it'll keep it in solid. If I turn degenerate on, it'll bring it down to the polygon. So if you have extremely large models, it'll allow you to move them quicker. As you can see, that's a little bit quicker than doing it in solids. So you take some of the intelligence of the machine and let it work for you. So clipping planes, for example, would allow you to take a model of a building or a house and look inside it. Let me show you one of those. This one's called Kitchen DXF. Now you can see with this one, a little more reason of why you might want clipping planes. Let me bring up clipping for you. So here's a kitchen drawing. It's in 3D. And I can rotate around, but it's sort of hard to see what's in there. Now if you have layers, you can turn a layer on and off. But are you sure that everything's on that layer you want to cut? Or for example, you want to take that front wall in. Or you have an interest in that side wall, so all you really want to look is at the kitchen. So the first thing you're probably going to say is, can I zoom in? Pan it around a little bit. And I want to zoom in a little bit more to it. You can see clipping planes can be real important in architecture or the mechanical model when you want to cut down some of the walls. Let's go back for a second to objects. I'll bring that up. For example, I can say I want to take the countertop off. And I'd also like to take away the refrigerator. So now I have the model with layer control and with clipping planes. Pretty impressive feature. Last thing I'm going to show you quickly is the capability to work with lighting. For example, here's the lights right now. We have the red light on. So I'll rotate the globe until I can find it. As I move this red light along, you'll see the model's actually changing color in real time. Now we can go in and actually change the color also. Pretty good interactive response. And this is running off our starter Indigo, which means that it's really our trailing edge graphics technology. This next view is Inventor. This is our latest one. We have the same kind of real-time capabilities to zoom in and pan out, but we have a little bit more capability. For example, I can go into sort of an edit mode. Say so I'd like to take that wall and delete it, along with this, along with that some of the trim. And now, when I go back into view mode, I've actually taken those layers out and I have some other capabilities. So what I've done is deleted everything except the kitchen table here. So I can go in and select the tabletop, for example. And under editors, I have material, color. Let me bring up the material editor first. We can work with the transparency of the table. For example, we can make it transparent. You can see through the table now. And we also have shininess, which will have light reflecting off it. The color of the table is currently here. Well, I'd like to change that. 
And here we have a color wheel, so you can see it changing in real time. And we also have the capability to bring some sliders up. For example, here's one way to move the colors. Under manipulators, and a manipulator is what allows you to grab something and move it, let me bring up handle box. I can actually be, I'm actually able to resize that table now. I can also say I'd like to grab the drag point. I'd like to move it up and over to here. So they've actually moved that tabletop away. We can also do something such as copy it and paste it. So now I've got two tables. As you can see, it's more than just a viewer. It's a nice way to grab something, edit it, and take a look at it. So now we've got a couple tables and a couple tabletops out there. What other capabilities do we have? Well, we've got an examiner, we've got a fly-through, we've got a walk-through, we've got fog, various types of transparency. We've got a whole types of, of selectors on how we actually want to grab objects. The manipulators, I'm not going to show you them all, but there's trackball, there's handle box, jack. And jack allows you to resize objects with a little bit different type of visual interface. Trackball is sort of interesting. puts up this circle globe so you can grab any one of them, rotate the globe by any one of those directions, X, Y, or Z. Now this one's pretty interesting because every scene needs to be lit. What we're going to do is we're going to create a direct light. There's a light, and I can move the light. I can also move the light physically in space in 3D. If I go down any one of these X, Y, Z coordinates, it'll move the light in that direction. Now that I have the light there, I can say I like to go and edit that color. So it brings up the color widget. As you can see, as I move the color around, it changes the scene color. So as you can see, Inventor is a pretty powerful tool that we give you. It's actually more than just a tool, it's also an application. If you wanted to go and write some capabilities into the scene viewer, you can if you know how to program in C. Inventor is a very high level way of programming. We expect a lot of products to be written using this. Now the nice thing about Inventor is that Inventor runs across all of SGI's platforms. So if you have larger and larger models that you'd like to take a quick look at and move around, you can always move it up to one of our larger machines and take advantage of that horsepower. The next thing I'm going to do is show you how Workspace, our graphical user interface, allows you to easily interact with the Indigo. When you hold down the right mouse button, you get open, make new copy, make link copy, remove, get file info, so forth and so on. Let's go through these quickly for you. There's several ways to open an application or a document. The first one is click on it and say open. Another one is to actually drag it to an application that knows where it is and it'll open automatically. It's called drag and drop. For example, now you're able to go in here and grab, for example, my recommendation is tight weave and say under edit, cut. Now, there's quite a few things here. We can say make a new copy. It'll immediately put another one on the desktop for you. Another way of doing that is holding down the alt key and dragging it away. When you hold down the alt key and pull it with the left mouse button, you can get multiple copies. As you can see, it updates it very well for you. Copy of material estimate and copy two of material estimate. Well, we don't really want all those, so let's go down to remove. Another useful thing is to say, let's make a linked copy. A linked copy is an instance of the first one that you can then drag and drop in another folder. When you open it up, you'll see that it's in here. It doesn't take any extra space up, and you can organize folders and documents very, very efficiently without taking extra disk space. You can drop that again into another area. You notice when I drop a folder another one, it turns blue. That implies that it's being copied into it. So you can see it's extremely easy within Workspace to move documents around and folders around. Get File Info will allow you to actually see who owns the file, what size is it, when it was changed, and also the read, write, and execute privileges. 
printing, we'll go into printing later, and transfer. Now transfer is pretty powerful. I can take read a tar tape, I can copy to it, I can send or receive files from a remote machine, and I can change the transfer menu. Other things from Workspace I'm allowed to do, for example, is make a new directory. Now I dropped it right here and named it empty directory. I can just quickly type and just say new dot files. I can grab this folder, drop it in here, and then say, I really want that in my work in progress folder. As you can see, it's all in here. Let's bring it back out to work with. Under arrange, you have by name, by group, to the end, align to grid, show path, and hide path. For example, right now we're showing the path between the folders so you can see the hierarchy. I can go back in here and say, let's hide that path. As you can see, it's no longer there. Fetch icon is used when you don't have an application or a folder in front of you, but you'd like to find it. Fetch will go out and bring it up to your desktop so you can find it easily. Set preferences is your system level preferences. Snap grids to icon automatically. Retain remove files. Ask before overwriting files. Hide supporting files. And here you have the options of apply, accept, cancel, or help. Now with AutoCAD, we've also added some other features. For example, with AutoCAD, it knows enough that says edit, it'll actually start up AutoCAD itself just by holding down the right mouse button. And of course, you can double click it or drag and drop it on the AutoCAD icon. AutoCAD also outputs DXF files. And what we've done with Workspace is allow you to do quite a few things with it. Beyond your open and make new copy, we have edit in AutoCAD where we actually bring up AutoCAD and allow you to edit that DXF file. Inventor is one of our 3D viewers along with Iris View, Iris View 2, and we can convert the file into Inventor format or Showcase, which we'll show later. As you can see, it's quite a bit of capabilities. This is what we call an intelligent icon. One of the first applications that we consider a productivity tool is called Showcase. Let me open that up quickly. Showcase has a lot of capabilities, ranging from audio, labels, text. You can bring in 3D images, flat picture images, and you have quite a few drawing tools. For example, you can come in with a label, type hello, Then you have the capability of obviously changing the color. Since we're silicon graphics, we believe in color. You can take a box. You can add an image. Since we're very, very powerful, we believe you should be able to also size that image quickly. a lot of other tools with, with Showcase also. I'm not going to go into all of them, but something you should really work with. It's a very, very good productivity tool that comes standard with the system. For example, you can build templates. We have a text gizmo. We have a text ruler. There's a spell checker. There's a keyboard template. There's an image viewer. It's a 3D viewer. There's an audio gizmo, along with aligning objects, linking objects, and this allows you to build full presentations. For example, if you click on Run Program, you can go out and run other programs from Showcase, or Open File, or see the previous page or next page. And there's also a slideshow capability. As you can see, this is something you should really explore, because there's a lot of fun to do a presentation with. The next thing I'm going to show you is how Silicon Graphics allows you to manage your system. For example, this is System Manager. Now what System Manager allows you to do is go out and work with Backup and Restore, for example. Here's the menu for that. I have a remote tape drive. I can fill in the machine I'm loaded on here, and I can say I'd like to Backup and Restore. The next one allows you to manage your disks and files. And that doesn't mean just your disks and files, but across the network. For example, let's say you're out of disk space in your machine. Double click on Disks and Files. And here, for example, I've said I want to add the files, or some of the files, from a machine called Empire. So I go into D1, and it says what I'd like to do. I'd like to mount files of this directory. So slash n for network, slash Empire. I'd like to have that mounted. And I click on Accept down the bottom. This allows me to have this disk accessible to my system now. As you can see, the little wire here 
indicates that it's mounted across the network. So now we've mounted one disk on Empire, but I'd like to make sure I don't mount the other ones. So I'll go in here and pick on delete. So it's ready to delete the resource. I say accept. It's now gone. For example, I can also go in and delete the other disks that are on this machine. As you can see, it's a very elegant way to adding disks across the network. The next thing I want to show you is printers. So these are my system printers. I'd also like to add another one. So I click on Add, it brings up another dialog box that says Add New Printers. For example, I can look at Serial, Parallel, or on the network, I type in the host name here and click on List Printers, it would tell me which printer was there. In this case, let's look at a Serial Printer or a Parallel Printer. Let's put in that. Let's call it ACAD and click on Accept. As you can see, it's now been added to my printers. Next thing we'll look at is serial ports. Here we have both ports capability. We'll look at port two. We have a choice of a terminal, a tablet, dials and buttons, or a space ball. Port one is currently set up for a terminal. The last thing we're going to look at is users. This is where you'd add a user. For example, we need to add a new person. Let's call him Bob. And I take a look at the detailed information. Here, for example, it says Bob has no password, full name, office, phone, and so forth. Click on accept because that's what I want to put in. And you can now see Bob is added to the users on this machine. So as you can see, there's an extensive amount of things you can do by using the Workspace System Manager to manage your system. The next thing we're going to do is show you how to transfer files to machines that currently are not on your desktop. For example, I'd like to transfer this machine to a machine called Empire, but it's not here. So what I do is go to the Change Transfer menu. It brings it up. I'd like to specialize this one. The machine we're going to be working with and remote copying is called Empire. So you click on that. It's now added. Highlight the other ones to keep them and click on install. Quit. Now we just go back to the transfer menu. It says send files to Empire. Bring up a dialog box saying where would you like to put it? And we'd like to put it in their temporary files, slash user slash temp. It will first try to log me in as Wilbur, but since I don't have an account on that machine, it will then go and transfer the files as a guest. There, we're done. The next thing I'm going to quickly show you is the dumpster. You double click on it, you can see what's in there. So if, if you would by accident copy something in there and set your preferences up to keep them on your desktop, you can do that. Of course, if you just want to empty it, just come down empty dumpster, and you're done. What I'm going to show you now is some of the tools that come standard with Workspace. Of course, you have a clock capability. We also have a thing called Sound Filer. So if you have a sound and you need to convert it from one type to another one, you can. Jot, which is an easy text editor. A calendar. An audio panel. Since we have the capability to go all the way out to DAT sound, we feel we should have that along with the meter and monitor capability. An application called GROS View, and that allows you to see what's actually going on with your system. An application is called Image Snap. This allows you to take screen images. An application called Movie Maker. This allows you to make movies with silicon graphics off the disk and a movie player application of our multi-track capability. And another application for sound editing called Sound Editor. This has been just a sprinkling of the standard features of the Indigo. Silicon Graphics believes that we should empower you to perform at your best. Thanks for your time.